Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all of it, Troy Felter, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming community of faith where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We have just a couple of announcements to share on this, should we say, slightly warm July morning. First, we are continuing to collect items for Mission Kids. Once again, Mission Kids deals directly with children who have been abused, and we have an entire list of items, everything from new stuffed animals to gently worn books, as well as individually wrapped snacks. Uh, we have seen throughout the past three years of pandemic, the number of abuse cases, both domestic violence involving spouses, as well as the abuse of children increase. So please, in these last few days of July, help us support mission kids. We are continuing to have our weekly Wednesday night prayer meetings. Those happen at 7 p.m. They are a drop-in opportunity for anyone who just wants to take, you know, about a half hour to check in with your neighbors, your fellow church members, and also with God. And you can join us on a cell phone, a laptop, a tablet, or even over a landline. Uh, finally, there will be two periods in August where I will be away with my family. If you have a pastoral emergency during that time, I would appreciate it if you could call two numbers. First, the church office, so that I at least may receive word. But secondly, my friend and colleague, Reverend Amelia Castillo, she is the pastor right up the street at Trinity UCC in Skipback. And she will be covering and responding to any pastoral emergencies. Seeing as there are no other announcements to share, let's be in the spirit of worship together. I give you thanks, O God, with my whole heart. I bow down toward your holy temple. I give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. At this time, let us rise either in spirit or body as we are able, and together sing.
your guidance. May our sharing and worship free us from our burdens and make us worthy of your healing. Let us grow in your love and your service, and may the mystery we celebrate this day help strengthen our faith. Amen. We are called into lives of prayer, and yet from sunup to sundown we are busy. We are overscheduled, we have conflicts, we are distracted. Join me now as together we confess to God the ways we do not communicate with our Lord. Merciful God, forgive us when we do not bother asking, searching, or knocking at your door. Prayer is a gift, a sacred means of communicating with you, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit. We often fail to make time for prayer, and our relationship with you languishes. Remind us that there is no problem too great, no sin too evil, nor worry too frivolous to bring to you. Help us pray more often and more honestly. Amen. In the name of Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Will you destroy the whole city for lack 
of the fire. And God said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, Abraham spoke to him, suppose 40 are found there. God answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then Abraham said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak, but suppose 30 are found there. God answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Again, Abraham said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. God answered, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then Abraham said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. God answered, For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. Our gospel is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Hear these words. Jesus was praying at a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say this. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, let me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And your friend answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get it up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find, not and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word of the Lord. And that is me, God. So as you may have already surmised by the sermon title, by our first hymn, and by our scripture lessons, today we are talking about prayer. And those of you who have heard me preach on prayer in the past have probably heard me say, I think prayer is a little bit like flossing our teeth. We know it's good for us. We know we should be doing it at least every day. But it takes time. We don't like doing it in public. Maybe we're not 100% certain of our technique. So, even though we know it's good for us, we don't always do it. Is that a fair assessment? Prayer could be like flossing our teeth. And in addition, if you're anything like me, you get flossing guilt every time you go to the dentist. The hygienist asks you, oh, are you flossing daily? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> and I think we do the same thing. We come to church. Folks 
Are we praying regularly? Are we communicating with God? Are we making time? Sure. Yep. But in reality, we don't always make time for this vital part of our faith. Like flossing guilt, I think we do get prayer guilt. We may come to church and have a particularly meaningful worship experience, go home and pray regularly for a few days, or maybe we go on a retreat and we have an incredible experience with God and we are revitalized in our prayer lives for a week or two. Similarly, maybe we get prayer guilt when we see others around us regularly praying. Perhaps we go out to eat and the family at the next table over bows their heads to pray. And suddenly there's a little nagging voice in our head saying, should we be doing that too? Again, I know that I feel prayer guilt whenever I am with my dear friend, Layali. Layali is a Muslim and she drops to her knees, stops what she's doing and prays five times a day. No matter where we are. A few summers ago, our families were together at the Museum of Natural Science down in, outside of D.C. and when it was time for prayer, she prayed right there amidst the dinosaur bones and exhibits. It's a level of dedicated observance that's honestly alien to most of us Christians. I mean, yes, we pray in church. We may pray before a meal or before going to bed at night. And we certainly pray in the midst of a crisis. But how many of us set aside time from our daily busy schedules to pray? I have great admiration for those who come to our Wednesday evening virtual prayer service just because it is a brief time out that we set aside time for God. For those of us who aren't praying as regularly as we should? Is it because we don't feel like we have anything important to say to God? Or perhaps we assume that since God is omniscient, which means all-knowing, the fact that God discerns our thoughts from far away, we don't have to talk to God. There's no need. God already knows everything. Why do we have to talk? But folks, there is a need. As a Methodist friend once told me, it's the difference between having a conversation and just eavesdropping. Right? Conversations lead to relationship. God may be all-knowing. God may know what's in our minds and hearts they know everything that's going on in our lives. But just knowing doesn't build relationship. Confessing, saying thank you, asking for help, praising and lamenting those things build relationship. Communication builds relationship. And we seem to know that when it comes to our children. The more ch time we spend with our children or grandchildren, the closer we become. We seem to know this about our spouses, right? Anyone who has ever gone to marital counseling knows the very most fundamental thing we can do in our intimate relationships is communicate. But yet, when it comes to God, we seem to forget that. Now, as we heard this morning, we have two scriptures and both involve prayer. 
One is from the Hebrew scriptures and the other from the Gospels. The one we heard first out of Genesis features Abraham. And if you recall, Abraham was the very first worshiper of God. The very first person God made a covenant with. In Genesis 12, God called Abraham out of his homeland and promised Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 12, 1-3. In God's vows, that covenant, God promised what? To bless, protect, and prosper Abraham if he was faithful. The Israelites took this covenant seriously. When they prayed, it was a two-way street. They held God accountable. They questioned God when life didn't seem fair. They expressed righteous indignation when God didn't seem to live up to God's side of that covenant. Many prayers in our Hebrew scriptures were more forceful than me, more demanding than maybe we're used to. Even in the Psalms, Psalm 4, verse 1, Answer me when I call, O God of my right. And similarly in Genesis 18, today we see Abraham call God into account. Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? He asks. Far be it for you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked. Abraham doesn't kneel, but stands before the Lord and lets God know how unjust the situation seems to him. He reminds God of God's side of the covenant. Protect. Bless, prosper, not destroy. So why is that important? I think it's important because many of us have at one time or another been angry. I think if I were to pull the congregation and say, who here doesn't get angry? Not a single hand would go up. We get angry. We get angry at other people. We get angry at the state of the world. We get angry at God. Many of us at times have felt left down, forgotten, or not heard. We all at one point or another have had bad, ugly, hurt feelings. And I think many of us feel that we need to censor those from God. That only our purest, most holy thoughts are worthy of including in prayer. And I think that keeps us from talking to God when we need to talk to God the most. Yes, God already knows our heart and our mind. So it's okay to be honest with God, even when we're angry or upset, even when we have an axe to grind. God can take it. God can take it. See, relationship means bearing with someone in love through the good and the bad and the ugly. And Abraham reminds us that we are in relationship. We are in covenant with God. No matter what it is, we can take it to the Lord in prayer. God wants us to. And we don't need to censor, to only give to God that which we think God wants to give. Now in our gospel lesson from 
Luke, we hear Jesus telling us how to pray. You see, even the disciples found prayer difficult at times. That should make you feel better. Even the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? Jesus gave them, gives us, what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. Words we can use when we're having trouble praying. When we don't know what to say or honestly where to begin. Jesus goes on to give yet another lesson about prayer. And that lesson is persistence. Luke 11, 8, Jesus gives the example of going to your neighbor's house in the middle of the night because you need something. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you anything because he is your friend, at least because of persistence, he will get up and give you whatever you need. It's that persistence. Even if the neighbor didn't feel like answering the door, you keep knocking all night. Eventually, you're not open up. We are not a bother to God when we pray. Let me repeat that. We are not a bother to God, even if we pray for the same thing over and over again. How many of you at some point have thought, oh, this concern is too trivial to bother God with? Or there are people who have it so much worse. I shouldn't bother God about my small problem. God tells us to persist. Even if we are lifting up the same worry again and again, even if we think it's small or insignificant, God says if we knock, the door will be opened. So don't feel bad about knocking loudly or frequently. God wants to be in relationship with us. Relationship requires communication. We take the time to ask our spouse or our children or our best friend how their day went. But do we think to tell God how our day was? Prayer is important. Even more important, perhaps, than flossing. Do not tell your dentist I said. We all need to take more time for prayer for our relationships with God. And beyond just making time, we need to know, absolutely know, that we can take anything to God in prayer. Even our more unsightly emotions like anger, frustration, hurt, or jealousy. As God already knows, you might as well talk about We need to know that we're not a bother or an annoyance to God. God is never too busy to listen, even if it's the same conversation again and again. Even Jesus, in his lesson today, encourages persistence in prayer. Finally, just as a parent would never deny their hungry child food, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So ask. Pray for others. Pray for yourself. Pray for your joys. Pray for your griefs. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for the country. Pray for the world. Pray for strength, for healing, for peace. Pray the Lord's Prayer or pray your own words. Pray in traffic. Pray in the shower. Doesn't 
are in covenant with God. And God wants to hear from us, talk with us, no matter what. Don't be afraid to take it to God in prayer. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and God will open doors. Amen. around the world 
There have been thousands who have died from the heat in Europe, as well as the wire, wildfires that this has spawned, as well as um, some who have also been hospitalized or died here in the United States. In addition to the extreme heat, we also pray for those who were killed or lost their homes in the massive flooding in Afghanistan. Prayers are lifted for Ukraine and for all areas where there is war and violence and where the people must flee for their lives. Thank you. Yes. And I forgot, uh, for my dear friend, who's been battling most of his And what was her first name? Fran. Fran. We lift up Fran, who's battling lung cancer. And that reminds me, we continue to pray for Mary Ann, who also is dealing with cancer. Thank you. Let us turn our hearts to God. Gracious God, please hear all of these names, all of these people we love and worry about. We ask that you pour out your healing in body. We know that there are many sick with covid we know that there are many struggling with cancer and that there are those who are facing difficult diagnoses and pregnancies this day. We ask that you be with them and heal them. God, we also, also ask for healing in mind and spirit. We pray for those dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's, those struggling with depression or any kind of mental illness. Be present with those who have suicidal thoughts, who struggle with addiction or eating disorders. Lord, we also turn our hearts to our entire world. We pray for those places of disaster and violence. We ask that you quiet the violence in Ukraine as well as other nations and our own street corners. We ask that you heal our hearts, often made hard by indifference, prejudice. Lord, make us whole. We ask all of these things in the name of Christ, who taught us to stay together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us rise in spirit or body as together we sing.
Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.